Welcome to the Far Eastern University Interdisciplinary Studies uh, Beyond Discipline Lecture Series for today titled How to Get Published in an Academic Journal. From the editor's perspective, this is Ron Gascon, faculty member from the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, and I am your MC and moderator this afternoon. I'm so glad to see all of you here, and of course, we will be sharing later on a very interesting and enriching topic. Our webinar for today is also made possible through the support of the University Research Center Research Capability Program under its director, Dr. Rita Pusha, and the Institute of Arts and Sciences Virtual Activities Supporting Education, or ISVAS, under the leadership of our Dean, Dr. Rowena Capulong Reyes. Before we proceed to our webinar proper, we would like to present also to you the course offering for the Department of the Interdisciplinary Studies of IAS. And you can see on your screen now, these are the course offerings for the Bachelor of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies. And we have three tracks under this program. We have the Philippine Art, Culture, and Society track. The second one is Global Development and Sustainability Studies track. And last but not the least, the third one is the Urban Spaces and Transition track, where I'm also part of the faculty members or roster of the faculty. All right, thank you. Our webinar today is relevant, especially now that we have migrated in a full online ecosystem as our speaker will update us with the current landscape of scholarly writing and publishing of works. Provide us with insights, identify challenges, and make us understand the process of getting published in an academic journal. The open forum later in the program encourages participants to ask questions for information, clarification and further discussion. So we really look forward to your participation later in our open forum. To participate in our open forum, you may submit your comments and questions anytime by posting at our chat box. You may also do that by posting your comments in the comment section of the Facebook live streaming that's happening right now. Just a reminder, please make sure that your microphones are always on mute to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you for your cooperation and let us maximize our time by learning from our webinar today. Without further ado, for the opening remarks, may I call on Mr. Oliver Fabricante, faculty member of Interdisciplinary Studies Department. Sir Oliver, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, thank you okay, very much. The floor is yours, sir. Yes, um, Dr. Rowena Reyes, the Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences, Professor Mark Oliver Isla, the Associate Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Rita Cusho, the Director of the University Research Center, Professor Juanito Anot, Jr., the Program Chair of the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, fellow faculty, students, and colleagues, good afternoon. In the study of Skimansky, McKiernan, and Alperin in 2020, that was last year, entitled Why We Publish, Where We Do, Faculty Publishing Values and the Relationship to Review, Promotion, and Tenure Expectations. In the introduction, it states, and I quote, between 2006 and 2016, the number of academic publication increased 56%. In 2018, there were more than 33,000 academic peer-reviewed English language journals publishing more than 3, mil 3 million articles a year. It made me ponder why more than 3 million. Then it led me 
to find reasons why people publish. In South Africa, the University of Stellenbosch Business Schools Management Review in 2018, in the said publication, it stated some reasons. Why is there a need to publish? The first reason is visibility. Information is disseminated and should be known. This way, our research studies would contribute to the betterment of the field where we belong. The university continued by asking why is publishing in a journal superior in publishing in other types of publication? In accredited peer-reviewed journal, every article follows a scientific procedure. Highlighting the importance of validation, the university mentioned, and I quote, the peer review process serves as a quality control mechanism. Experts in the field review your research and validates them without bias. Two points, visibility and quality control are few of the reasons why people publish. In one article published by the American Psychological Association, Anderson, Rake, and Rake mentioned that the publication process enhances writing skills. Citing Lawson and Smith, it's also an avenue to learn from constructive feedback provided by reviewers. Even casual conversations with our fellow faculty members would give us insight on how to proceed to the research process. And of course, a published research is also seen as a proof of our abilities in data collection and analysis. With the benefits these studies and the articles have mentioned, and for sure with the information and knowledge that will be shared with us this afternoon by our resource speaker, I am confident that this event will prick our curiosity into research and jumpstart our research journey. Thank you very much and welcome to this event. Thank you so much, Sir Oliver, for that very insightful opening remarks. And now may I call on the department chair of the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, Mr. Juanito Ann Jr. to introduce our guest resource speaker for today. Sir Yuan, the screen is yours. Um, thank you, Sir Ron. It's my honor to introduce to you our uh, research speaker for this afternoon. He is an assistant professor of the depart at the Department of History at the Mayo de Manila University and uh, associate editor of Philippine Studies, Historical and Ethnographic Viewpoints. He is the author of A Capital City at the Margins, Quezon City and Urbanization in the 20th Century, uh, published by Ateneo de Manila Press and Kyoto University Press in 2019. He obtained his PhD from the Graduate School of Asian and African Area Studies of Kyoto University as Ron Poku Fellow of the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. His other works on urban and environmental history have appeared in City and Society, Nature and Culture, Journal of Southeast Asian Studies, and Journal of Social History. Mga kaibigan, uh, palakpakan po natin, bigyan po natin ng virtual na palakpakan, walang iba kundi si uh, Dr. Michael D. Pante. Maraming salamat at uh, salamat rin sa FEU for uh, this invitation. Uh, isang magandang at malaking karangalan na maimbitahan na magsalita tungkol sa paglilimbag uh, lalo na sa mga akademikong journal. Uh, bilang bahagi ng isang journal, uh, I'm associate editor of uh, the journal Philippine Studies, Historical and Ethnographic Viewpoints. Uh, I, I do have some things to share. Uh, when it comes to research and publication at gaya nga nang nasabi kanina, given the circumstances na napakalaki nga ng pressure for academics like you and me to publish, uh, this is a very timely topic. So let me just share with you uh, a short presentation. So uh, let me share screen there. So how to get published in an academic journal? And I want to share my insights as an editor of a journal. Uh, but at the same time, I also want to uh, share with you some of the things that I learned as a contributing author. Of course, nag -ano rin naman ako, nagsusulat rin ako and uh, I was able to publish in some uh, journals. 
So parang pareho, okay? As an editor and as an author na na-accept and sometimes na reject uh, I-, I would like to mix the two points of view throughout the presentation. But before getting into that, uh, gusto ko sanang magsabi ng ilang mga importanteng bagay tungkol sa publication by bringing up a historical figure. Pasensya na po kasi galing ako sa disiplina ng kasaysayan at may konting bias. So my disciplinal bias towards history led me to pick this woman by the name of Salud Algabre as I think uh, a very important historical personality from which we can draw inspiration. Especially because uh, as we all know, the pressure of publishing uh, and the pressures of uh, getting yourself known out there in the academic world medyo malaki at medyo mabigat. At marami na nga yung mga sabihin na nating nawawalan ng loob, parang hindi pa nga nakakapagsimula, parang ayaw na nila dahil ang pakiramdam nila sila ay marereject o sila ay uh, hindi magtatagumpay dito. Uh, Salud Algabre is uh, a sort of uh, not so well-known figure. Uh, born in 1894, uh, but she's well-known for being one of the generalas, or the gen- actually, the, ang generala of the Sakdalistas. So, some of you, especially those who teach history, siguro may mga iba dito nagtuturo ng, ng kasaysayan, would know the importance of the Sakdal movement, uh, during the pre-war period, uh, the Commonwealth period, even up until the Second World War, they were a group of peasants fighting for uh, rights and in the uh, democratic rights and independence. Ngayon, bakit ko kinakailangan banggitin si Salud Algabre? Later on, mapapakita ko. Parang ang layo naman yata nung isang historical figure in the pre-war and Commonwealth era, anong kinalaman nun sa publishing in the contemporary world 2021 uh, given the globalization of knowledge production why should we pick salud algabre as a source of inspiration for us academics i think one important uh, lesson that we ought to learn from salud algabre stems from the fact that many of us as i've already mentioned many of us feel like we cannot make it in this uh, pressure-packed academic world. I'd like to share this uh, nice comic strip I found regarding uh, the everyday life of an academic. And we see here what we often regard as imposter syndrome. At marami sa atin may ganyan. Uh, sa mundo ng akademiko, hindi lang sa kanluran, hindi lang sa Norte America, kundi pumasok na rin dito sa Pilipinas may tinatawag tayo ng mga akademiko na parang feeling nila mayroon silang imposter syndrome. Feeling nila hindi sila totoong akademiko kasi nakikita nila, especially given the reality of social media, you see your fellow uh, academic posting his or her credentials, you see your colleague getting published in these high-impact journals, and then you look at yourself, you look, uh, look in look at your resume and see, uy, parang wala pa akong nagagawa. Parang nandito na ako, I've been here for years, a decade or so, and I haven't done anything significant. It's a reality that we, that a lot of us face. The reality of uh, feeling, feeling so small, feeling like you're an imposter, feeling that you're, you're not really part of the academic world. And it's one important uh, it's one important point that we need to address. Before we get into the intricacies of publishing, we need to address the realities of the scholar first. I think, and this is why I wanted to begin with the scholar, with the, with, with the academic, with you and me, the individual, rather than the publication process. Uh, I want this presentation to begin by focusing on the scholar, given the realities of increasing competition, and as well as bureaucratization of uh, academic publishing, the whole publish or perish kind of culture uh, that we face every day, as well as the increasing occupational and mental health problems. What I mentioned earlier regarding the imposter syndrome is no joking matter. It's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the prevalence of mental health issues amongst 
uh, scholars, amongst academics, even people with PhDs, even people with already, you could say, uh, in the middle of uh, of the food chain, marami pa rin dyan nagkakaproblema na parang hindi nila nagagawa ng maayos sa trabaho nila. Kasi nga, because of the increased competition, because of the of the pressure of publishing and publishing year in, year out, it it really drives us crazy. Diba? Lalong-lalong na ngayon nga na uh, given the global pandemic uh, na ang daming nagbago, ang daming constraints sa bahay ka lang. And then, parang hindi naman nagbabago yung uh, imposition for us to publish and publish and publish. So parang hindi ka makapunta ng library, hindi ka makapunta ng fieldwork, and yet we are expected to deliver all this output talagang mawawala ka sa bait. Mawawalan ka ng bait, mawawala, pasisiraan ka ng, uh, ng tamang pag-iisip. We need to face these realities. And as well as increasing cases of predatory practices by so-called predatory journals or predatory conferences dahil nga nakikita ng ilang mga unscrupulous uh, individuals and organizations na ang dami sa atin na talagang desperado na makapag-publish, desperadong magkaroon ng uh, ng isang index journal. Papasok, gumagawa sila ng mga kung ano-anong uh, uh, bogus practices and I think many of us are familiar or, or already familiar with the practice of journals charging uh, very expensive fees para lang mai-publish. Samantalang sa ibang journals hindi ka na dapat nagbabayad para ikaw ay malimbag doon sa kanilang publikasyon. Kaya pag samasamahin natin yung mga bagay bag, yung mga bagay na iyan, napakalaking mga pasanin para sa ating mga journalists, mas mas mabigat na pasanin pa kaysa doon sa costume ni Rabia. Kailangan nating harapin muna yung mga bagay na ito bago tayo pumunta doon sa mga aktual na detalyadong proseso ng publikasyon. At paano natin maharap ang mga bagay na ito? Well, yun na nga, babalik tayo doon sa uh, uh, tauhan uh, sa katauhan ni Salud Algabre. I, I think we can look at Salud Algabre as a source of inspiration for us to deal with these problems. Increasing competition, increasing bureaucratization, mental health problems, predatory practices. We need to focus on the scholar but not just as but not just the scholar as an individual academic but as a person within a collective. Ano bang meron kay Salud Algabre? Si Salud Algabre ay naging generala because she has a movement uh, to begin with. Hindi ka naman nagiging generala nang walang mga taong sumusunod sa'yo. Kaya ka ay generala kasi merong mga tao, merong kang mga kapwa na sumusunod sa iyong utos. Merong kilusan na kumikilos kung kaya ikaw ay tinatawag na pinuno. And I think many of us fail to grasp this important reality in research public in research in publication that we are in a scholarly community kaya ka tinatawag na scholar kasi merong grupo ng mga iba pang mga scholar na katulad mo ng ginagawa at hindi ka dap, hindi mo dapat tinitigan ng iyong sarili bilang isang individual kundi bilang isang bahagi ng isang mas malaking kolektibo na kumikilo sana bilang isang kolektibo ng mga scholar na pareho ang inyong uh, ginagawa. So, yun yung unang letrang M na gusto ko sana ng pagbabalik ng tayo doon tayo sa M sa kabuuan ng presentasyon na iyon uh, na ito. Research needs a movement. We need to think collectively rather than as individuals for us to succeed in the quest for uh, getting published. At the same time, kailangan rin nating tignan si Salud Algabre because Salud Algabre was not afraid to make mistakes. Later on, may papakita akong very quotable quote from Salud Algabre uh, where she shows that uh, mistakes are not really mistakes. Mistakes are parts of a long process and we need to accept that. Before we can charge into the cruel world of publication, we need to accept this reality. We will make mistakes and we should we should not be afraid to make those mistakes because those mistakes are what makes us better academics and the last one the last m is uh, medyo pilit uh, publishing needs to be more feminized this is a third m of this presentation what do i mean by more feminized 
uh, marami na sa atin ang uh, masyadong yun nga individualistic at hindi lang basta individualistic kundi hyper competitive pagdating sa uh, research publication. So medyo konektado ito dun sa unang M na research needs a movement. We need to be more feminized when it comes to looking at uh, uh, academic publication. Okay? Rather than look at it as para ko, as an individual, I need to, uh, to, to charge into this quest kailangan kong magapi at matalo lahat ng mga tumatayo at humahad lang sa akin. Uh, I think we, we need to be more attuned to relationships that we build rather than conquests that we need to accomplish. Parang kailangan siguro ng paradigm shift and it's a, a feminized paradigm shift that I think we should uh, imbibe uh, for us to prosper collectively. Uh, in the in in in, the, in this publication uh, process. So ayun na nga, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina binabanggit ko na quotable quote from Salud Algabre. Uh, she is quoted for this very inspirational uh, insight. Sabi niya, no uprising fails. Each one is a step in the right direction. In a long march to final victory, every step counts. Every individual matters. Every organization forms part of the whole. And the same thing goes for publication. You are an individual scholar, but you should not look at yourself as an individual scholar. You are part of a research community. And I think the whole idea of publishing in a journal is a concrete manifestation of this collective idea behind publication. Kasi kaya ka nga nagpa-publish a journal because you are recognizing the fact that your uh, contribution to knowledge will be diba, nothing kung walang journal na magpa-publish noon. At the same time, kung walang audience na nagbabasa ng journal, it also means nothing. If there are no editors, if there are no peer reviewers, then your quote-unquote piece of information, your contribution to knowledge, it won't amount to anything we are always part of a collective. We need to realize that right from the very start. So, just to repeat, ito yung first M na binabanggit ko kanina. Research is a movement. We should look at it collectively because knowledge production is always a collective process. No individual can do it alone. Kahit nga isang single author na journal, hindi mo magagawa yan kung wala kang research assistant kung walang librarian na tutulong sa iyo kung walang kung kung walang kakasambahay na sa bahay mo na gumagawa ng iyong mga uh, gawain sa bahay para ikaw ay may oras at makapagsulat and at the same time in terms of the dissemination process you need editors you need peer reviewers you need a layout artist and you need a community of scholars para sabihin na you are actually producing knowledge. Knowledge production cannot exist at the individual level. A scholar can only exist in a community of, of fellow scholars. We need to realize that. And by saying that, I also want to alert you to uh, an important insight that I have learned uh, being an editor for the past 10 years. Journals and editors are not your enemies, but your comrades. We are part, and I, here I am speaking as an editor, I, as well as other editors, even the peer reviewers, we are not your enemies, but we are your comrades in this, uh, in this movement for knowledge production. Kasi yun na nga, the problem is we have imbibed this very competitive ethos in publication na, okay, meron akong gusto, meron akong nagawang experiment, meron akong nagawang fieldwork, Meron ako nagawang natuklasan na bago about our about our history and I want to publish that in a high on in a high impact journal so that I can get the individual accolades. So we Im imbibe that kind of spirit, competitive spirit, and then we look at the quote unquote barriers, di ba, na that, that that gets in the way between our idea and publishing it. So ang tingin natin parang Diba? Para meron kang mga kalaban na kailangang talunin in the process. Na hindi naman. Editors are your comrades. Editors are your friends. Uh, at ito, I am speaking as a 
uh, as a uh, as an editor of this, this journal Philippine Study. So medyo, medyo pagpasensyahan niyo na magbubuhat ako ng bangko ng konte uh, a, a, a sort of self promotion plugging of uh, of our journal uh, and our journal is uh, uh, has been here since 1951 one of the oldest journals it's a, it has been a quarterly periodical since 1951 uh, first appearing as philippine studies uh, but the historical and ethnographic viewpoints na subtitle it was only added in 2012 Uh, specifically when we tried to have it indexed in Thomson Reuters parang isa sa yun sa mga suggestions nila na mas maganda masyadong na, na dahil masyadong malawak yung term na Philippine Studies we need to uh, declare a more focused kind of uh, academic expertise so yun na yung pinili namin historical and ethnographic viewpoints because before we were publishing practically anything Uh, under under the sun. Basta tungkol sa Pilipinas, sometimes we will, we will even publish uh, articles that are uh, part of the natural sciences, sometimes even hardcore economics. Pero ngayon, for us to to be more focused, we use that uh, we use that subtitle, Historical and Ethnographic Viewpoints. And uh, our editorial board, we, we do have an editorial board, an international advisory board. Uh, and, and these editors uh you know are 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 your friends we we should you should treat them as friends and uh we have this long list of previous editors uh, many of them are quite familiar to some of you siguro especially those who have been studying uh and teaching history uh, people like uh, Horacio de la Costa was a one time editor of the journal from 1959 to 1964, one of the stalwarts of uh, philosophy here in the Philippines, uh, Padre Roque Ferriol. So as, as you can see, uh, practically all of uh, the editors uh, in the first few decades of the journal, they were Jesuits, uh, male Jesuit priests who are scholars at the same time. Uh, although that would change eventually, uh, pero pagdating kay Father John Schumacher, another, uh, another important notable historian, Uh, by by the, by the 2000s uh, there would be a sort of paradigm shift uh, to make it more secular so papasok dito and not just secular but also feminized so people like Antoinette Angeles uh, Doreen Fernandez of course uh, were uh, be- became heads became editors of the journal but currently uh, the chief editor is uh, Dr. Filomeno Aguilar Jr. A sociologist historian Uh, known for publishing works on uh, illustrados, migration, uh, citizenship, and others. So uh, aside, aside from that, we also have a, a quite a formidable lineup of editorial board members. This is the current the current uh, editorial board membership, uh, international uh, and also interdisciplinary. Uh, Warren Anderson, History of Medicine, based in Sydney. Carol Howe, uh, literature based in Kyoto, Paul Kramer, Rizil Mujares, national artist, Rasel Fareñas, Vicente Rafael, Rosan Rotten of uh, Amsterdam. So parang, uh, if you look at it, parang sa so unang tingin, parang wow, uh, how can I please those people? Parang masyado naman yatang uh, bigatin yung mga pangalan. But don't worry, kasi uh, as, as long as you can show your, uh, your 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 unique insights in your manuscript we are here to help uh, what people often uh, what, what what a common mistake uh, made by people is when they think na parang the, the journals are are there and editors are there uh, to nitpick on the mistakes of manuscripts hindi in fact the the mere fact na tinanggap namin yan and we sent it out for peer review It already means the editors already see something doon sa sa manuscript. So pag umabot yan ng peer review, and I, I, I'm not kidding, this is no exaggeration. When your manuscript already enters the peer review phase, that should be an accomplishment itself. Kasi ibig sabihin nun, yung editor ng journal, yung yung chief editor o yung associate editor, uh, sinasabi niya na, wow, this is worthy of consideration po pwede itong i-publish. It just so happens that in the usual journal setup, ang nangyayari ay the editors cannot say it unilaterally that we will publish it. 
by virtue of the practices of uh, academia, kailangan may peer review process. Kailangan may individual vetting na nagsasabi, okay, it's not just you, the editors, you need people who are more, di ba, who have a, a higher level of expertise on this topic or on this uh, geographical scope. Nasasabihin nila, okay, kami rin, Siguro two, at least two, kami at least two editors apart from the journal editor magsasab, at least two reviewers apart from the chief editor magsasabi, we are also in agreement. Okay, gusto rin namin niyang makitang ma-publish. So just reaching that peer review process, it's already an accomplishment in itself. Yun nga lang, I'm not saying na wala, hindi totoo yung realidad na may mga reviewers na medyo medyo supply. And there are certain reviewers na medyo na medyo harsh, di ba? Uh, exacting revenge, uh, critical anonymous rejections, and di ba let's face the reality. Academia, especially here in the Philippines, is a very small community. Di pag kumbaga kung all your life nagbabasa ka ng sabi na natin history of urban studies, di ba? Uh, by the time na nakasampung taon ka na, more or less you already know the topics ng ganitong scholar, si scholar X, ganito yung paborito niyang topic, si scholar Y, ganito yung kanyang topic, ganito yung kanyang paraan ng pagsulat. In a lot of cases, anonymous reviewing is no longer anonymous by virtue of the simple fact na napakaliit ng mundo ng akademya. Parang Sim, unang unang paragraph pa lang ah, kilala ko na kung sino to kahit na anonymous na yung yung text problem is there are some reviewers and i am not i'm i'm not disputing this fact kasi totoo naman talaga may mga reviewers din na ganun na quite petty uh yun nga exacting revenge and we we need to uh we, we also need to consider this when we enter the publication Uh, when we, when we enter the publication process and at the same time this is also me uh, requesting you kung kunwari gawin namin kayong reviewer in the future at malamang ganun din naman ang mangyayari di ba magiging reviewer din kayo one way or another please do not be reviewer too please do not uh, exact revenge dahil sa simpleng petty ano lang petty petty jealousy Uh, parang kasi hindi ko hindi ko trip yang tao na yan na na-meet ko na siya sa isang conference napaka-isnabero niya uh, yun na nga we are in a community so it's a two-way process di ba uh, pag kayo ay naging kayo ay nagsulat kayo ay nag, nag nagpasa ng manuscript uh, try to uh, try uh, As- asahan ninyo na may mga asahan niyo na may mga gantong klasing kritisismo but at the same time uh, kapag kayo na may naputol sa lugar ng reviewer please do not be uh, overly uh, critical ng mga ng mga pinapasa sa inyo na manuscripts eventually magiging magiging reviewer din kayo di ba laging constructive criticism kasi eventually kayo rin na magiging kayo rin na magiging quote unquote biktima ng inyong sariling ginagawa. So it's a, it's, a, it's a two-way process. We are part of a community. So, ayan. Uh, so just to reiterate, di ba, we, we should not look at it as a, an individual process. You need editors. You need reviewers. Uh, research production cannot be done alone. Kailangan ng mga tao na uh, kailangan ng mga tao na titingin at magde-disseminate niya. We, we, only, we only exist in a community Uh, but we are also we as editors we are not your enemies. Uh, oftentimes we are your advocates pa nga. Pag nakita namin na maganda yung ano mag nakita namin maganda yung yung manuscript ninyo, ang problema lang is just in its raw form uh, the moment we pass it on to referees it's already uh, I, I I would say it's already an accomplishment. Kasi nga ano rin eh remember that in journals Oftentimes, journals do not pay reviewers. At isa, isa rin yung sa mga medyo gray, uh, gray areas in, the, in, in academic life. So parang to maintain the integrity of the academic practice of double-blind peer review, it's the normal practice na walang hinihinging 
bayad ang referees. At ang journal, hindi rin siya nagbabayad sa mga referees. Kasi parang, yun na nga, to, supposedly to maintain the integrity. So, but that also creates another problem. So kung uh, hindi nagbabayad yung journal ng kahit na anuman doon sa mga kinukuha niyang referee at napakaliit ng academic world, there comes a point na magkakaroon talaga ng, ng, ng breaking point na bakit review ako ng review as a referee? Bakit review ako ng review ng mga, ng mga manuscripts? And I don't get any credit for it. Di ba? Usually, hindi mo naman ilalagay sa resume mo na I, 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 I refereed for this journal and for this so and so and so uh, review. Di ba? Hindi mo naman ginagawa yan. Wala namang monetary value. I don't think you can use it uh, as, as, to, as, a, as a way to bolster your, uh, your promotion application. So there, there comes a point na parang mahirap din for journal editors to always rely on the same peer reviewers every time there's a manuscript na pasok doon sa kanilang doon sa kanilang topic. So that should alert you to the reality na dahil ganoon hindi kami nagpapasa ng uh, ng mga manuscripts to editors if we already know na yun ay mare-reject kasi yun na nga eh, ayaw ayaw na ayaw namin abalahin yung mga referees na magpapasa kami ng isang ng isang uh, ng isang manuscript na malino naman na up for rejection, di ba? I think a lot of people also have this misconception that journals want as many submissions as possible kasi kapag marami yung mga rejectable manuscripts bumababa at tumataas yung rejection rate ng journal. And the rejection rate is always one of the key indicators na ginagamit for journals to be to be ranked. Na parang wow, ang taas ng, ng rejection rate ng ganitong journal. So nap, napaka ano nila, napaka uh, napaka uh, napaka masela nila, 'di ba? Napaka napaka meticuloso, napaka taas ng kanilang standards. It, it can also be a double-edged sword. Kasi kapag masyadong maraming nire-reject, at especially lalo na kung nire-reject siya sa level ng peer reviewer, remember, we, we, we do not pay peer reviewers. So kung nagbibigay kami palagi ng rejectable material sa peer reviewers, masisira din kami as editors doon sa aming very small pool of referees. So don't, di ba, I, 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 I'm, I'm begging you to disabuse yourself of that misconception na gusto lang namin magpa-reject na magpa-reject. Ano pa kayo pa namin yung gano'n? Kasi na, na, nakakaawa rin yung mga referees na sila yung haharap at parang okay, sinayang mo yung oras ko, uh, walang kakwenta-kwenta tong manuscript na ito, it's up for rejection. It, it doesn't work that way. Dahil nga, uh, we, we, we don't pay our we don't pay our referees as much as possible. We want their work to be as smooth as, as possible. And that's why I am telling you just to be just to reach that level of peer review is already a a sort of accomplishment okay so uh, that's more or less the first m na na uh, kasama sa akin presentation and then for the next one let's go back to the let's go back to uh, salud algabres quote uh, no uprising fails each one is a step in the right direction uh, yun din diba uh, the second M, if you can still recall, is that uh, do not be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes will always be part of the publication process. Uh, in, hindi pa sa tanang buhay ko, hindi pa ako nakarinig ng isang manuscript na kung, kung ano yung ipinasa sa point A, yung initial submission, na hindi yan na bago. At least may konting corrections man lang, typographical errors, be ready to face the reality na may mababago, may ipapapalit, may mga corrections, may mga typo, may mga grammatical errors. In fact, isa nga sa mga number one indicators na medyo bogus yung journal kung saan ka nagpasa. If the journal chooses to publish your work as it is, di ba, in its original form when you first submitted it, Red flag na kaagad yun kasi no self-respecting journal would ever publish a manuscript in its raw form. Yun na nga. At kasama rin yun doon sa 
uh, first M na binabanggit ko kanina, we are in a community. The mere fact na merong tumitingin diyan na peer reviewer. The mere fact na merong editor diyan na tumitingin not not for the not for the conceptual points but yung simple ano lang, simple editorial, gra- grammatical, sentence structure, punctuation, it already shows you the collective process behind knowledge production. So kailangan may may talaban, merong interaction between you as the author and people other people looking at your manuscript na sasabihin ay ito hindi masyadong malinaw ay ito mali uh, in in fact may mga punto pa nga na even a, a very minor point I, i just like to share one of my uh, one one experience I, i i i had na simpleng simpleng ano lang simpleng allusion lang ng isang author I, I, hindi ko na babanggitin ko sino yung author in a journal submitted eventually published in uh, in Philippine studies may binabanggit siya na isang event that happened uh, supposedly around the time na namatay si Rico yan uh, kung naalala do sa mga kaherasyon ko kung naalala niyo pa si Rico yan uh, and then I, i i read the manuscript i mean it's it's a very very minor point it it, it, it won't alter the main argument of the author nung binasa ko, eh, hindi naman nangyari yung event na yun. At this, around the same time na namatay si Rico yan. So I alerted the author na hindi tama yan. Uh, may, 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 may factual error na, na nandito sa manuscript mo. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, you know, it's a, it's a very minor point and yet it, it shows you na you need other scholars also to look at your to look at your work. Kasi minsan actually hindi nga madalas because you are too engrossed in your own uh, in your own manuscript there are many times there are many instances na nakakalimutan mo na, na ay oo nga hindi ko hindi ko masyadong na research itong itong bagay na ito or you you, you fail to uh, introduce a particular concept because for you it's already a given you don't need to explain it to yourself but remember You are writing because you want to explain something to other people. You want other people to understand you. And if there are certain concepts that are not that self-evident to other people, it's always good to have another person, an editor, a referee to point it out to you. Na magsasabing, "Hoy, explain this concept first. Hoy, define this uh, define this framework first." Kasi in many cases sa atin dahil tayong gumagawa We just disregard it. It's already a given for us. So revisions should not be treated as failures. Revisions are part. It's always a step in the right direction. It's always part of this of this long march to final victory, which is uh, which is publication. And uh, with that, I, I want to share with you some important uh, components. Nitong uh, second M na ito. Uh, one of those would be. Uh, being bold with the journals and topics that you select, uh, especially for young scholars. Uh, young scholars actually have a kind of license. Uh, it, 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 mga, one of the best things that I learned uh, listening uh, listening to uh, listening to uh, senior scholars. Na one of these best pieces of advice na nakuha ko sa kanila. Na as a young scholar in in your twenties or even in your your early thirties. Uh, be bold with your with your decisions kasi hindi habang buhay na batang scholar ka at pag batang scholar ka you have the license to make mistakes diba and I, i i get to i get to listen to these senior scholars na binabalikan nila things essays publications that they wrote when they were still in their 20s and they're, they're still in their 30s na parang pag binalikan nila binasa nila ulit sasabihin nila ako ba nagsulat nito? <laughs> Napakapangit naman ng sinulat ko. And yet, it was published. ba? Diba? So, uh, do not be afraid of making the mistakes kasi wala naman talagang perfect publication. There's no such thing as a perfect publication. Kahit nasabi na magsusulat ka ng isang manuscript, ng isang, ng, 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 ng isang essay, na parang feeling mo na, na ibuhos mo ng lahat doon sa essay na iyon, palaging meron kang maiisip after publication na ay sana pala dinagdag ko yun sana pala naihabol ko iyon di ba uh, yun na nga no such thing as a perfect publication and then no such thing as a scholar 
who is already an expert right from right from the very beginning. Wala 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 lang ganoon. 'Di ba? We, we will develop our own we will develop our own theories as we move forward. May mga may mga paradigm ka na maiisip in your early 20s na pagdating mo ng 40s, anong klaseng kalokohan 'yon? And yet, 'di ba? You you have the license to make those mistakes kasi bata ka pa. So um, my advice to to young scholars, yung mga baguhan, huwag kayong mag-alala na parang kasi pag na-publish na parang habang buhay mong dala-dala, not really. <laughs> hindi, hindi talaga. Uh, you'd, you'd be hard-pressed to find a scholar, an established scholar, a senior scholar, na kapag pinakita mo sa kanya yung kanyang mga sinulat during his early years, na parang 100% nag-a-agree siya doon. Mag- magbabago at magbabago yung isip ninyo. At posibleng may mga, bag- mga bagay ka na isusulat ngayon na pagsisisihan mo eventually. But point is, you made that decision. You submitted it to a journal. You, you published it. So, why not be bold uh, with the journals? E- even with the, yung, uh, yung, yung, yung this, this fear of publishing in a high-impact journal, in a scopus journal, or an international journal parang walang nagpapublish sa Pilipino doon. Ah uh, walang problema, submit ka lang, walang mawawala kung magsasubmit ka. Uh, and I am thankful also for a lot of senior scholars na uh, nagbigay ng maganyang payo. And uh, just want to relate a, a specific uh, encounter I had uh, na I, I, I tried to submit a manuscript ako naman ito as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a contributing author. I tried to submit submit a manuscript to a I mean, high-impact journal sa, sa Southeast Asia. Uh, hindi ko nalang pangangala, papangalanan kung, kung, kung sino yung journal na yan. Uh, but they rejected it. Kaagad-agad. They rejected it. Sabi, it's, not, it's not within the scope of our journal. And yet, the editor, the chief editor of that journal uh, said to me dun sa, sa kanyang rejection email, na why don't you try this journal based in the US? Na Scopus din, na, na Thomson Reuters din. I, I think it would be a, a better fit. I think the editors there would welcome it. Hindi lang sa journal namin dito okay, kasi parang medyo malayo, but try this particular journal. And guess what? Sinabmit ko to sa binigay niyang journal, yung sa recommended journal niya, at the same manuscript got accepted in that journal sa US. One of the best decisions I made. So, Uh, yun na nga, balik ko na sa earlier point ko na editors, of course there will always be exceptions, may mga editors na may, 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 may tama sa ulo at medyo, alam nyo na, may pagkadiva at medyo uh, wala, walang, wala, walang amor sa mga tao. But you will always encounter editors na yes, they are strict with their standards, yes, they would be rather picky with the manuscripts but they would always give you some form of advice. So, yun na nga, editors, more often than not, they are not your enemies, yes. but your comrades uh, in the movement. So, be bold. Huwag, huwag kayong matatakot. Huwag kayong, kung, kung natatakot kayo, parang masyado namang uh, prestige journal yan, walang mawawala kung magsasabit. Hindi naman kayo, hindi naman kayo sisingilin ng pera. Ay, yun nga ang problema. May mga journal sa naniningil ng pera, but that should be a red flag na yun ay isang predatory journal. But, I mean, wala, walang bayad sa pagsasubmit sa mga journal. So, just the submit it. Hit send. At malay ninyo matatanggap. So, wag kayo mamroblema. And of course, embrace change. And of course, revisions. Kasi sabi ko nga, it always be part. It's always part of the territory. Kapag ang, ang, ang mentality ninyo going in ay, ito na yan, wala na mababago. I mean, I poured my heart out in writing this manuscript. Hindi, it's it's not it, it it doesn't work that way. Change will always be there. Revisions will always be there. Kasi nga we are in a community of scholars, 'di ba? Your you the, the knowledge that you produce, it only becomes knowledge because another person or two referees sa, said, ito pwedeng mo pang paganda ito. Why don't you consider it? Why don't you include this? At usually hindi naman kinakailangan na sabihin gawin mo lahat ng revisions eh. And I think this is one important tip that I could give. Uh, hindi kinakailangan gawin lahat ng revisions na pinapagawa ng mga referees. Many of us feel this parang overwhelming sense of parang oh my God, ang daming gustong ipaga, parang gustong mag-total overhaul ng, ng referees na, 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 na tumingin ng aking manuscript. Remember, 
the final decision almost always rests with the editor. At dahil nga yung editor ay nagsabi, nag nagrecommend na ito ay for peer review, it's already an indicator na bet niya yung manuscript mo. May nakita siyang maganda doon sa manuscript mo. And so, when looking at the long list of revisions given to you by your referees, don't feel that responsibility na parang lahat kailangan yan, word for word susundin mo. You are still in control of your revisions. May magagawa ka pa rin doon sa iyong revisions. Na parang pwede mo sabihin, eh, hindi naman ito ano eh, hindi ito yung gusto kong mangyari. In most cases, in, of course, hindi ko naman masasabing lahat, but I, I assure you, in most cases, editors would be there to listen kung magpapaliwanag kayo ng mabuti. When you say, when you revise, and then you explain it clearly na this recommendation by referee A, hindi ko siya masyadong bet kasi parang it, 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 it will contradict my, my other point. O di kaya hindi na ito labas na itong sa itong scope sa scope na ito ng aking ng aking uh, ng aking topic editors would always pay attention to those to those details at kung nakita lang na logical naman there's enough reason for you not to follow the revisions editors would want di ba uh, would still accept your uh, your manuscript uh, and then final word on this uh, particular aspect focus on your work and not the journal. Uh, ayun na nga, nabagit ko kanina na sometimes hindi talaga bagay. Sometimes a journal wants a very specific kind of manuscript. So hindi siya pasok. Uh, kung hindi yun eh, di wag. Di ba? Hanap ka ng ibang journal. Di ba? I, I think many of us are still in that mentality na parang kailangan gantong journal ang mag- magpapasa ako. Ayun, only high prestige journals. Hindi. May binabagayan din ng mga particular journals yung, yung ating mga ginagawa. So focus on your work. Focus on polishing your work rather than aspiring for a particular kind of journal. Kasi kung na- na-reject ka ng journal, eh di anong, anong gagawin? Uh, rather, think of other similar journals na po pwedeng tumanggap ng iyong trabaho. Kasi if, kung, kung ayaw nila, eh di wag. It's their loss, not yours. Okay. So yun na nga. Uh, for many, uh, the stages of revision is like this. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So para bang nakakapanlumo. But again, don't treat it like na, na, parang, ano, na para bang Mount Everest sa kailangan mong akyaten. These are necessary steps. These are the uh, steps required for us to polish our work. Kasi nga, di ba, it's a collective process. Knowledge production is always a collective process and never an individual type of production. And I just I just want to share yung uh, yung process namin ng peer review in uh, in the Drill Philippine Studies. Uh, yun nga, first we have an internal review. So dun pa lang, mayroon na kaagad acceptance rejection. So when we look at it, pag hindi Philippine topic, reject. Kung hindi historical ethnographic, reject. But it doesn't mean na na pangit yung trabaho mo. It just means na hindi talaga siya bagay para sa amin. And as I mentioned, kung umabot yan sa external review, meaning double blind referee review, usually two or three readers or referees uh, selected based on expertise, uh, it, it's already an accomplishment. Kasi it means us editors, ako, halimbawa, nakikita ko na okay to, maganda to. And I am, uh, I, I am endorsing this particular manuscript to this editor na expert sa topic na ito. To, uh, to this reviewer na expert sa topic na ito. To this reviewer sa expert na topic na ito. Kasi kami rin as editors, we, we don't want to endorse a manuscript for peer review na tingin namin totally rejectable. Kasi magagalit sa amin yung mga referees namin. And then when it passes the double blind peer review, usually matagal din, six months. Kasi ag- again, we were not paying anything to our referees. And so, uh, minsan talaga matagal. Uh, yung isa sa, sa mga problema natin sa academia but I mean, kailangan rin tanggapin yun uh, di ba, as, as tayo lahat marami rin naman tayo ginagawa not just reviewing manuscripts, not just writing manuscripts nagtuturo rin tayo nagche-check rin tayo ng papel so I mean, this is a justifiable kind of uh, burden, I should say uh, and then reports sent to author and then we ask for revisions very rare that we don't expect revisions. 
uh, wala pa nga tayong naririnig sa sa history ng journal na, na, na hindi kami humingi ng revisions. And again, it's a red flag. If a journal doesn't ask you to revise anything kahit typo man lang o sentence structure, it's already a red flag na bogus journal 'yan. And then there's a final publication decision. And uh, the usual decisions are accept as submitted, pero of course with changes, minor changes for grammar, punctuation, etc. Accept subject to minor revisions na may mga content na kailangan palitan but it won't change the entire complexion of the manuscript. And then the usual case is that we encourage authors to make major revisions, to consider certain frameworks, to, consider, to, to add further sources, Uh, to incorporate the, the manuscript uh, and see it in light of the literature. And yes, of course, we do reject manuscripts. Uh, I think the, currently we have a 30% rejection rate sa Philippine study. So 3 out of 10 manuscripts na dumadaan sa amin get rejected. And of course, pag pumupunta kayo sa mga medyo high impact na mas tumataas at tumataas yung rejection rate ng mga, uh, ng mga, ng mga journals na iyan. Okay, so, so this is our flowchart, uh, but more or less, yun, kung ano yung sinabi ko kanina, yun na yun. So submission of author, submission to the journal, initial internal review, pwedeng return, pwedeng accept, tapos dadaan sa review process, uh, and then marami ta siyang pagdadaanan. So matagal talaga. So please don't expect na parang pagkasubmit mo, you are expecting within the year mapapublish siya. No, no, no. Sometimes... May mga kaso nga umaabot ng mga limang taon. And may, may, although yeah, may, may problema doon pag umabot ng limang taon. But I mean, at, isa rin yun sa mga, sa mga punto why predatory journals are flourishing. Because many scholars are of the mindset na parang kaagad-agad instant gratification kasi nga nagahabol sila ng rankings, nagahabol sila ng, ng pandagdag sa resume. So when they see that a, a journal offers them na parang upon submission in three months parang shampoo lang di ba in 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 three months maganda mapapublish na namin yan that's already a red flag kasi uh, sa referees pa nga lang eh you know, you'd be hard pressed to find referees who can give you a proper assessment in three months what more yung actual publication process matagal talaga siya so uh, and ayun na nga predatory journals prey on this kind of mentality na parang gusto ko kaagad-agad, gusto ko within the year. It, it doesn't work that way. Okay. Uh, so, ayun. So, just to reiterate, be bold with the journals, be even with the topic that you select. Kung kunwari, history ka all, your, all, your, all throughout your career, be bold to, di ba, maghanap ka ng pop culture or sociology. You, you, you cannot be caged in your particular a discipline lalo na ngayon na in the, we're in the age of interdisciplinarity and then uh, embrace change revisions are a part of life ganun talaga diba and then focus on your work uh, rather than the journal that you aspire to publish in and then for the last m and this is the last part of the journal uh, i want to focus on salud algabres uh, gender which is you know she she is the generala And we often focus on military leaders na lalaki, Aguinaldo, Gregorio del Pilar, Antonio Luna. We often tend to forget that many women uh, chose to uh, diba, take the risk diba, and engage in armed struggle for, uh, for, the, for, uh, for, the, for the interests of the masses. Marami ring mga babaeng nakibaka. And I think it's a good way for us to... Uh, To, to learn from those points kasi uh, ma, yun na nga marami sa mga problema natin sa academia ngayon i think and this is my this is my take on this many of the problems that we face in academia is because of this very masculine competitive hyper competitive kind of uh, ethos that we have diba and uh, my my advice here is for us working as a collective To, to lessen the competition and increase cooperation. Di ba? Bakit hindi tayo magkaroon ng research groups? And I, I, and, and I applaud FE for having events like this na magtipon-tipon yung mga scholars, yung mga academics, colleagues, inter-department, inter-college to talk about publication. Kasi nga, di ba, we are talking about systemic problems here. We are facing problems in academia that are systemic in nature and you cannot 
respond to a systemic problem on an individual level. You, you, you need comrades, you need colleagues who would help you uh, climb that mountain. Diba? Kailangan natin ng isa't isa. So why do we need to feel the drive for competition? Parang, ah, itong si... Itong si colleague X, di ba, grabe naman siya, nagpa-publish siya ng d- dalawang Scopus articles every year. Kailangan tapatan ko rin siya. Ma- maluloka ka kapag ganyan ang iyong mentalidad. At i- I mean, it doesn't it, it it won't do you any good kapag ganoon yung situ- sitwasyon. Uh, and also at the same time, I also want to encourage my fellow men here sa 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 Zoom call na ito to do your housework. And I mean literally literally housework. Maghugas kayo ng pinggan, maglaba kayo ng damit, magsampay kayo ng sinampay, maglinis kayo ng kubeta. Kasi it will help. Why do I say that? Ano kinalaman niya sa publication? It would help kasi one uh, because of our internalized competitive nature na parang kailangan gusto kong kailangan makapag-publish ako yung naiisip kong manuscript it's just in my head it's just a matter of putting it into words it's just a matter of typing it out madalas dahil ganun tayo parang 24/7 pagkagising natin gusto nating ma- 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 magawa yan at masyado tayong overly focused Nakaka- nakakawala rin yan uh, di ba kaya nga tayo nagkakaroon ng writer's block pag minsan but I mean uh, personally Personally, pag gumagawa kayo ng bagay na hindi na walang masyadong kinalaman, especially routine work, paghuhugas ng pinggan, it helps you uh, take out your your mind out of your manuscript, out of your research, your experiment, at magugulat kayo parang bigla na lang habang naghawak-hawak niyo yung plato o hawak-hawak niyo yung damit, nagsasampay kayo dahil hindi niyo siya iniisip, may papasok na lang bigla dyan na ideya na parang ay oo nga bakit hindi ko gawin 'yon 'di ba parang it's another para bigla kang nagkakaroon ng another way of looking at your manuscript precisely because you are not putting so much serious attention onto it 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 really helps it really helps but aside from that ang gusto ko rin punto dito ay para as men and and this is why I I am directing this piece of advice to the males it's because We also need to learn the constraints faced by women. Na ang dami pa rin nilang mga kinakailangang barriers na hakbangan. If it's very tough for us men, scholars, to juggle teaching, research, and other stuff in academia, lalong-lalo na siguro para sa makababaihan na pagsamasamahin mo yon, and then dagdagan mo ng housework the expectation of raising the children the expectation of cleaning in the house i mean simpleng ano lang simpleng pagkakagawa ang gawa lang na kayo kaya gawin niyo rin yon and you will realize ang laki-laki ng burden for for women and what what good should it do for institutions i think marami pa rin sa mga institutions natin still very male centric still men at the helm making decisions it would help men if if they participated in housework they would make decisions na parang iniisip rin nila yung kapakanan ng mga taong gumagawa rin ng gawaing bahay so you would make i mean more sensible and more sensitive gender sensitive decisions kung kayo mismo ay gumagawa ng pagpapalaki ng anak pag uh, paghuhugas ng pinggan at kung ano-ano pa okay so let's let's feminize the the workplace it, it it would really do a lot of good and of course the last point here in the same way that women should not be measured solely based on their offspring diba na parang marami sa atin ang tingin sa babae ay naka, nakabatay sa kung paano nila pinalaki yung kanilang mga anak tandaan rin natin there are other ways of expressing womanhood diba kung nagkaroon ka ng isa o maraming anak it shouldn't matter kung wala kang anak and you 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 uh, you chose Celibacy, it shouldn't matter. Ganun din dapat pagdating sa publication. I mean, publication is just one aspect of research. Publication is just one aspect of knowledge production. Merong knowledge dissemination, merong sur- uh, service, merong outreach. We shouldn't be measured by our output. We shouldn't be measured by whether we publish two Scopus articles 
a year. We shouldn't be measured, diba? It, it shouldn't be a matter of us publishing and publishing and publishing in high impact journals because if we don't, we would perish. Uh, it's, it's a very daunting task. And it's no surprise na ang daming mental health problems sa academia because of this hyper intense competitive nature sa academia. We, we, we cannot respond to this kind of culture if we are alone. Kasi po pwede sabihin, okay, uh, ay, ayoko ng ganyang klaseng publish and perish culture, individually, hindi ako papasok dyan. It, it, it doesn't address the problem. Again, we are a collective. We are in a scholarly community. Diba? Women, diba, are uh, ganun din. Kaya hindi sila dapat na, 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 nasusukat batay sa kung ano ang kanilang uh, uh, mag- magiging anak. At the same time, women will also have to rely on other women for their emancipation. Just like Salud Algabre. The same thing works for us. We cannot simply make the decision na, ay, ako, hindi ako magpapublish sa Scopus. I mean, I understand. I applaud you. And gets ko kung bakit may mga tao who choose not to publish in Scopus journals. Precisely because meron lang gantong klaseng hyper-competitive, elitist, and very first world kind of culture. But making that decision not to publish in Scopus journals, it, it won't address the fact that this is a systemic problem we are facing. So if we want to respond to a systemic problem, we cannot do it individually. We have to work as a collective. So uh, I think that's that's more or less it for uh, this afternoon. I, I I'm, I'm more than I would be more than glad to address your questions uh, throughout uh, 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 during the Q and A portion. Thank you so much. Sir, Dr. Michael Pante for a very engaging and insightful talk that really deserves a big round of virtual applause. And thank you for helping us reflect on these key points that you presented to us. And uh, just to maybe summarize it quickly, you know, number one, that it is more challenging now than ever for faculty and academicians to publish their scholarly works. That's for sure. Number two, you also presented to us the issues and challenges brought by the bureaucratization of academic publishing, like also the culture of competition, occupational and mental health, and the proliferation of bogus practices from predatory journals and predatory conferences. It's also interesting, Sir Mike, when you actually uh, showed us and used the revolutionary figure of Salud Algabre as an embodiment of what we need to remember as scholars. The research needs a movement, that's your first M, that mistakes are part of the long process of learning, that's your second M, and publishing needs to be more feminized or your third M. Instead, we need to be in a collective process and scholar will only exist in a community of scholars. And uh, this one, I really remember this. Editors and peer reviewers are your comrades in the movement. So we would like to take note of that. These are good point- pointers for the engagement later in the open forum. But before that, let's proceed and hear it first from our reactors. For our first reactor, make I call on one of our faculty members from the Interdisciplinary Studies Department Ms. Margaret Sanapo, PhD. Dr. Sanapo, good afternoon. The virtual floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, Sir Ron and uh, Dr. Michael Pante for a very enlightening talk about today's topic, which is how to get published in an academic journal. I'm not going to go into details of the three M's because the, Sir Ron already mentioned them. But I'd like to somehow uh, tell the group uh, that is listening right now about what I learned from the talk, uh, especially with, with the first M. The first M is about uh, a movement. And from what I learned from the talk, Dr. Pante was uh, encouraging us to be collaborative to work with other scholars in the field, or perhaps we can also work with other scholars in other disciplines because nowadays research is interdisciplinary. And um, Dr. Pante mentioned about, we are not simply collaborating only with uh, academicians or scholars. We are also working with other people. They may not be related to our to our academic life, they may not be related to our uh, research, but in one way or another, they help us produce that research that we are publishing. And um, 
the second M, this is something that I was, uh, I, I really, I really, uh, somehow this has an, if, uh, an impact on me because uh, making mistakes, I, I, I do, I, I was able to reflect on what I did when I was doing my PhD, was trying to look for journals for uh, where to publish my work. And I remember that time that I was very, um, shall we say, perfectionist when it comes to looking for journals. And it stressed me a lot. It really stressed me a lot because I did my, my PhD in another country, which really looked at journals. Dr. Pante mentioned a while ago that we should not really stress ourselves with with uh, trying to publish in a high impact journal. Maybe that's not for us in some in some occasions, but we may be our research may be very applicable to another journal, which may not be as uh, having a, a high impact as the first choice, but maybe could also help our academic life. And I, I really like that part. And of course, the third one, uh, yung sinabi ni Dr. Pante about research being more feminized, uh, research publication has more, it is more of a challenge when you are a woman because there's a lot of challenges that we are facing. Pwede ba akong mag, mag ano din, sir? Uh, ito yung mga nakita kong uh, nagustuhan ko talaga sa talk ni Dr. Pante. And I'd like also to ask kung, kung pwedeng ano, or pwedeng mamaya na lang sa Q&A. May tatanong sana ako kay Dr. Pante, pero siguro after na lang ni ni Doc Contado, ni Dr. Dominic, if she's here. So, yun na lang sir, yun yung uh, nakita kong uh, something that we we participants of this uh, conference or seminar could really uh, learn or reflect from so, uh, sa ano ni Sir Pante, sa kanyang talk. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir Pante, thank you then, Sir Yuan, for inviting me to this seminar. Thanks for the comments. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanapo, for sharing your learnings and, of course, your experiences. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Maggie. Moving on, let's proceed with our second faculty reactor. May I call on one of the faculty members also of the Interdisciplinary Studies Department, Ms. Dominic Contado, PhD. Dr. Dom, um, good afternoon. The screen is yours. Thank you very much, Sir Rondell. Okay, um, I, I want to weigh in on the part where, uh, where Dr. Pante was talking about uh, this whole thing about is this um, imposter syndrome. Yeah. The thing about this one is that it tends to chime in also when, or when it comes to trying to specialize. And especially if the faculty is trying to specialize in a, uh, I don't know what to call it. Um, the thing is when the faculty is trying to specialize in something which doesn't usually convey as well in, uh, in a regular traditional publication, but if they're into innovation, it doesn't suffice for them to come up with a certain creation that has an IP protection on it. For some reason, by default, we're under the assumption that it won't exist unless we write about it. What is that? Because th th uh, that's part of the, th the thing that characterizes oppression in the life of an academician. It's not just trying to get an article across peer review. And um, peer review alone, yes, I would agree. Uh, it has, it, 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 it can tend to be a mess itself. Um, there are three journals, I'm just not gonna say who, and I'm not gonna say what they are, but they are distributed in the top five universities and they have a lot of your reviewer number twos. Yeah. They would tend to shoot down the topic and the article itself, not just, it's, it, it's not, the argument itself that they're shutting down, but it's the fact of the topic that they they do not have an appreciation for, or they do not want to give it a chance at all. It's like there's this whole political subsystem existing within peer review research that I was never, I, I've been there before, but I've never expected that it could get that ugly. So that comic that you've shown about um, the road to paper publication, 
it, it happens. It really does. At saka may basihan po yung comic na yun. Hindi naman po siguro gagawin ni artist yung gano'n na ay trip niya lang, ay bitter lang siya, gagawa siya ng gano'n. It happened po. <laughs> it happens. Um, yung, although it gets, what makes this painful, it's not, the, it's not necessarily the comments kasi we understand, yes, we are a community. We have to understand that we need to set aside ego. But, it's it's not the constructive criticism or harsh criticism that we're necessarily afraid of it's the fact that if we're especially if we're trying to innovate on something there is a time frame and a time pressure for whatever it is that we're submitting some of us don't have po, the uh, the luxury of bouncing from one journal to another kasi meron pong best by date Mi, pami, minsan not all the time po may best by date po yung sinusulat namin at ganun ko po naintindihan yung mga iba na sinasabi nila na uh, yes, we should avoid predatory journals, uh, yes, instant gratification. But the thing is, yung mga iba nakikita nila, instead of instant gratification, they see it more as peace of mind. Especially if they're working for a university that applies this whole publish or perish thing. It, it can get frustrating and yes, this is not for the light of heart. And ultimately, if you go into the academe, it also means the one half of it, a good half of it, aside from teaching, means trying to check what you know and getting what you know out there, contributing, yes. But there's that whole mental health issue, especially if you're trying to innovate and it's not getting anywhere. What else? Um, Sige, balik muna po tayo kay reviewer number two. Um, this is not out of, it's not out of bitterness or anything. Please don't get me wrong. I just find it ironic if we take it in the context of this talk that we're talking about the social sciences. We're, we're into culture. We're into the human side of the academe, which is coming together and collaborating. What's ironic about this is that we're in the business of trying to educate others about what it is to be human. Where is that treatment with each other here in journal publication? That's what I want to know. The struggle is real, yes, but so is the political side. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That, that's all, I guess, <laughs> the tirade, I guess. <laughs> Thank you Maraming so much. Pasensya na po. <laughs> Maraming salamat din po, Dr. Huntado. That's very interesting. Those salamat din. Thank insights. you for the comments. Yes. Oh, don't worry, it's I, not your journal, sir. It's not your journal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I also have to, I, and or sorry, I, I, I would try to respond now. Mm -hmm. uh, yun nga, it's not, ano naman, it's not, it's not a personal attack or an attack sa journal namin. Uh, I'm sure mayroon kang uh, may tinutukoy na iba. Pero, uh, again, iba-iba rin eh. Uh, it's, it's good that you mentioned that for certain for certain researchers and for certain disciplines, meron rin yung nga na parang best buy kind of limited time frame. And so, for for example, iba yung idea ko ng uh, ng, 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 uh, ng, 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 ng time limitation given that my, I am working on historical topics compared for example with someone working on journalism na kailangan kaagad-agad mailabas yung kanilang uh, yung uh, kanilang research kasi mapapanis ika nga uh, pero ano ren we we have to contend with that fact but at the same time uh, given the fact na may mga yun na nga it's real hindi i'm, I'm not denying the reality that there are some I should say unscrupulous reviewers who are too demanding, too uh, deconstructive rather than constructive in their criticisms. I'm, I'm not denying that fact. Totoo yan. We, we, we have to face the reality. Uh, but one, I, I would answer that by saying one, kaya nga kailangan na we have to work on this as a collective. Diba? We have to treat this as a systemic problem that we, we, we cannot really face on an individual uh, on an individual level and uh, two uh, that's where i will return to my earlier point about 
editors being your comrades. Kasi uh, for actually for us, I, I, I cannot speak on behalf of other journals, but I think many of them or probably most of them would also have the same practice sa amin na halimbawa, if we already receive referees reports that are too mean, that are too uh, you excessive language, actually ini-edit na namin yun. We, pag nakakakuha kami ng ganun, we already tone it down so that when the author receives them, mas maayos yung pagkakasulat. ba? Diba? Uh, kasi we all we also want to ensure na the review process would not be detrimental to the mental health of our contributing author. So pag nakita na namin yung language talaga sobrang sobra na kami na mismo gumagawa. We we, we don't send the referee reports verbatim if we already know that there are some triggers there na po pwedeng maka maka makasama ng loob ng uh, ng author. And yun na nga because we are working as editors na ang gusto namin the, the reason why we endorse your paper to our to our reviewer is because we we see something we we see the potential in your work do not be afraid to contradict to oppose or to say i i, I don't like this recommendation by the reviewer pwede ganun uh, and we 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 have a lot of such submissions na nakakuha ng referees reports, bumalik sa author, nag-revise si author, and then author gives a lengthy explanation, detailed. Na this revision, okay, I, I did this. But this revision, I, I don't believe this because I don't think it's correct. I, th- I don't think it's part of my topic. And we will, editors will always listen to those kinds of explanations. Believe me, uh, editors would all, would, more than 50% of the time, would always choose the side of the authors, especially kung pumasok na siya sa peer review level. Glad to know that po, Dr. Mike. Thank you. Um, may peace of mind din po kasi we, we realize that we can act on agency pa rin kahit pa paano. Okay, thank you very much po. Thank you. Assuring and also comforting to hear from uh, Dr. Pante, editor himself, no, that we they are actually here to support us no i mean especially uh, earlier when dr Rontado mentioned about the term there's a political subsystem that is really existing <laughs> within any peer reviewed research i mean all of those who are trying to publish here they would understand what we mean by that no? but of course uh, dr pant is here telling us of course no that let's have we need to move together and work together as a collective no as a movement definitely All right. Thank you so much. And uh, I think, Dr. Hantado, you just opened the Pandora's box of the Open Forum. <laughs> Because of that, I mean, thank you so much for that very insightful. I, re- I was listening to your reaction and I-, I thought your reaction deserves another reaction or even a research about it. <laughs> Who knows, diba? So we're, we're actually giving birth some- to some in- uh, definitely in- interesting, uh, you know, works in the future here. Let me check first some of our questions from the chat box. And I can say here, maybe this one is from uh, Mr. Uh, Michael um, Angelo. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Pante. Can an undergraduate have a chance also to get their academic work being published? Yes, sir. Uh, sir Mike? Yes, yes, yes. Very, very, very. Tatlong yes. <laughs> uh, in fact, gusto ko mag, mag, mag-bot ng bangko. Ah, kasi uh, in one of our special issues... Uh, sa Philippine Studies dedicated to Professor Resil Mujares, national artist Resil Mujares. One of one of the best articles included there was written by a student na ano pa lang. Hindi pa siya, hindi pa siya, hindi pa siya tapos ang MA. I mean, naka tapos na siya ng undergrad. But technically speaking, wala pa siyang MA diploma. So, undergrad yung pinakamataas niya. But one of the best, uh, si Carlo Mungaya. Uh, gusto kong i-promote yung, yung gawa niya kasi idol ko siya. Uh, uh, he analyzed newspaper articles about written by Rizil Mujares and it got published sa, sa Philippine Study. So remember that we, we, we don't think, we don't consider expertise uh, when, we, when we publish. Even in journals outside the Philippines, even in high-impact journals. Yung nabanggit ko kanina na nag... Na, na, may sinadya sa akin na na, artic, na, na journal uh, kasi na-reject ako 
and then he told me lumipat ako doon I, I i did that when i was still uh, finishing my phd so wala, wala pa akong phd so wag niyo masyadong problema <laughs> yung, yung 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 diploma ang tinitingnan lang ng editors diyan at ng referees ay yung manuscript okay so even even undergrads can uh, can, uh, can can publish in philippine studies I, i i can speak on on behalf of the journal even in philippine studies we do publish uh, manuscripts by undergrads I think also Dr. Pante, you know, for the level of undergrad you know, for publishing, I think they have to also take note the support system that they will get from their department, of course, from their faculty, their department chair. You no, know? I mean, coming from experience as well. <laughs> no, kung gaano ka supportive talaga sila no sa yon. Anyway, so that's that's really something that we can take note. But tatlong yes yung sagot ni Dr. Pante. Thank you, Michael Angelo. Okay, we have a, a question here. Hindi natin siya masadong kilala, and but his name is Leonery. Okay, his question here. Hi, Mike. You mentioned that doing research takes a movement. Ano kaya yung outlook ng research as a movement to not just fulfill the publish or perish imperative para ma-promote but rather engaging in a counterculture where research is democratized at intentionally made accessible for even non-academics. It's a very loaded oh. but yet very insightful question. Yeah. I take it away Dr. Pante. Thank you sir. <laughs> itong itong si Leo pero namang i-message lang niya sa Facebook pero dito pa niya <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a very important question because uh, it 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 addresses the whole systemic problem that we have. Uh, we 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 can respond to the issues of mental health, uh, para mental health problems plaguing academics by, de ba? Precisely putting this uh, issue. Uh, front and center. Na ba- bakit ba kinakailangan masyadong focus sa uh, sa high impact journals? Kinakailangan scopus, kailangan at least one or two journals per year. We we can do that, yun na nga, by thinking of it as a movement. And how do we do that? Uh, there are organizations first. There are organizations, there are groups that do precisely this. Uh, may halimbawa uh may kay kaibigan ako may may, may talk siya mamaya about uh you know a, criti- a critique of scopus centrism in universities uh sponsored by a a, a group an a, a, a academic group uh na Filipino teachers uh Tanggulwika and PSLLF uh so uh, academic in nature siya so uh you you can find their fellow academics fellow college professors fellow scholars na may ganun ding issue na bakit ba masyadong focus tayo sa sa Scopus without critiquing or without dismissing Scopus journals kasi it, it would be hypocritical on my part na ay nakalokohan naman yung Scopus na yan kasi I mean Philippine Studies is Scopus journal and I do also publish Scopus journals at meron siyang silbi there there's a reason why meron silang may may ganyan ang problema lang kasi nagiging hyper uh, focus tayo na parang na, nawawala na yung yung semblance na it's a, it's an ecology of uh, it's an ecology of uh, platforms to disseminate knowledge. Parang ano lang yan eh, parang uh, parang da, yun nga ecology, parang gubat na kung kunwari may isang species lang diyan na super dominant, hindi masisira yung ecological balance so equilibrium. So kung lahat puro nakatutok sa Scopus, masisira yung mga journals that are very specific o it, it caters to a particular language or it caters to a particular geographical group na hindi tinitignan ng Scopus kasi masyadong ang western centric si uh, si Scopus. Uh, so we need to think of it as na parang kailangan po mag mag ano rin tayo pumasok tayo sa isang kolektibo we we need to address this as a uh, uh, as a group of uh, of academics uh, to, to talk to uh, to talk to administrators diba? we we can uh, engage them in healthy in healthy discourse for example in my in my own case sa uh, Ateneo sa, sa Ateneo de Manila University initially initially creative works like for example poems short stories they weren't given the same respect and at the same time 
monetary compensation as those essays published in journals. Ngayon na yun na lang yan. Na parang, okay, may national kantula, may gantong compensation, may gantong classing recognition, may gantong classing acknowledgement. And how did that happen? It happened because teachers in the humanities decided, let's bring this up for discussion. Kausapin natin yung administrators, the people handling the decision-making process in uh, at the university level. Bakit walang ganitong classing recognition for creative work? Eh, kumbaga, parang kaparehas din naman yan ng productive output ng isang essay published in a journal. So, yun na nga, wala, wala tayong magagawa if we think individually. We, we need to think as a group, whether as a formal organization or as colleagues working and then talking to administrators na this is the kind of research environment we want. Not a toxic research environment, but something that cultivates and uh, forwards the interests of the scholars and as well as the interests of our stakeholders, our communities. Right, that's very interesting, encouraging also, Sir Mike. No, you know, because there will be some institutions that would always say, I know this for a fact, no, it's a scopus or nothing, you know. Sometimes, no, I mean, there's <laughs> there's that's kind of culture, no, and somehow would bring a level of elitism among, you know, the those who are thriving, no, in the academy. And of course, again, it's an assurance from your end when you mentioned that we have to sit down and then look again, revisit our research agenda, our research direction, our research culture together. Thank you again. Sir Mike, I think this question naman is from our department chair, uh, Sir uh, Yuan Anot. One of the goal of publications is to contribute in the body of knowledge of a certain discipline. In your opinion, how can we make publications more enticing for other readers? Baka kasi tayo-tayo lang ang nakakaintindi at nagbabasa. Pero yung mga ilang issue, paano mapapaunawa sa non-academe? No? So it's in, in the connection also to uh, Sir Leonero's question earlier. Thank you so much, Sir Mike. Yes, in uh, that Go, goes back to my earlier point na we, we need to also look at uh, scholarship in terms of an ecology. And journals are just one of the species there. At ano rin eh, I, I, I get the, I, I see where it comes from, yung ganong klase criticism na parang puro, puro academic sa naman nagbabasa ng journal eh. Uh, and then the blame, oh, more often than not, is assigned to journals and editors. Kasi nga, napaka masyadong esoteric ng language, very specialized, uh, parang inaccessible sa karaniwang tao. Tapos meron pang paywall issue kasi, di ba, may subscription na kailangan bayaran for you to be able to actually access uh, physically yung, uh, yung issues. But for me, I, I don't want to sound like an apologist for the journals. Pero gusto ko rin namang ibahagi yung punto na journals are precisely like that. <laughs> Ganun, yun talaga yung point ng journal, which is to be a platform for exchanges among academics. So para bang, wag, wag naman natin sisihin yung journals na para bang napakapang akademiko na tayo lang ang nag-uusap-usap sa journal. Kasi yun yung nature ng journal. Eh. So wag natin siya sisihin. Rather, my proposal is this that we cultivate a kind of environment that uh, promotes an ecology, a healthy ecology of platforms of uh, knowledge dissemination. So dito ngayon papasok yung decision-making process uh, sa universities uh, when it tries to promote or acknowledge uh, certain types of knowledge production to the detriment of other forms of knowledge production. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Yun na nga, halimbawa, kung kunwari palagi nakatutok sa mga academic journals na index and scopus, tapos napapabayaan yung ginagawa ng mga, mga tao sa humanities na paglilimbag ng mga tula, halimbawa, yun ang nangyayari dyan. May mga naiit sa puwera na paraan ng knowledge production. Another, uh, for example, may ma there are academics who are not comfortable with uh, the traditional academic journals because their idea of knowledge production is to build it within communities. So meron ka mga academics na hindi talaga nagpa-publish literally, but they create knowledge because they are, uh, they, 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 they are embedded in, in an urban poor group 
or in a peasant organization, tapos yung kanilang knowledge, hindi mo talaga siya mababasa kasi hindi siya literally published, how can universities acknowledge that kind of contribution? So I think it, it's... Sorry kung para umiiwas ako sa, 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 sa responsibility. But for me, it's not the responsibility of the journal. Kasi yun na, yun na nature ng journal eh. Ano talaga siya? A, a very specialized group na eh, you, you want to preserve yung, uh, yung uh, expert level ng knowledge. Kasi importante rin siya. Hindi naman lahat kasi ay po pwedeng maka mag-contribute doon sa level, expertise level na iyon. Rather, we should actively promote paano yung mga knowledge platforms that seeks to connect yung level of the experts, yung level of the academics to the layman, to the ordinaryong masa. At ganun din, parang kukonti lang yung mga, parang, parang wala nga yata, universities that give due recognition, financial and uh, Uh, acknowledgement doon sa mga naglalag mga naglalathala sa mga popular platforms kasi nga hindi scopus di ba o kunwari nagpublish ka sa isang uh, sa isang uh, sa isang uh, tabloid di ba na actually mas, mas, mas wider readership ang tabloids kaysa sa journals or yung mga people who immerse in communities we need to create mechanisms to fully acknowledge itong mga taong ito because that's where we will find uh conversations na hindi tayo-tayo lang. We, we cannot expect that from journals because it's the nature of the journal. Talaga pang tayo-tayo lang naman talaga nag-uusap sa journals. We, we need to widen the ecology of knowledge production. Right. Again, it's it's very interesting the way you mentioned about integration no, of the different sources of knowledge. Definitely, Sir Mike, when when in our in our case, no, for example, no, there are a lot of projects, NGOs, no, from the civic society that we cannot really understand. No, I mean, but through the journal and of course the participation of the academe, definitely we can put it also uh, into discussion, criticism, and of course helping them as well progress with their projects. No, I, I think that's one of the my experiences with that was, was Gawad Kalinga before we know only about Gawad Kalinga, but now through different research, we are now trying to also facilitate that no i mean also understanding how we can use it as uh, you know as a, as a blueprint as well for community development and i think journals no and faculty and researchers scholars would have really big role to play no so thank you so much again sir uh there's a question here that's very interesting you know we've been going deeper into the discussion but we have to remember that for some of our audience this is something that would also inspire them to start you know and test the waters you know, in uh, publishing So this question is from Mike Mark Vincent Ranyosa. Uh, sorry, it's not Ranyosa. It's sorry, no, it's Nogra rather. Mark Vincent Nogra. I would like to ask po for tips from you <laughs> how to choose the apt journal or appropriate journal where I can publish my future work. I have no published works as of now, but I'm working on something po. I have no idea po how to choose a journal that is manageable, quote unquote, given that I have no prior experience in publishing. Are there specific parameters that I should be aware of? Po? Yes, uh, Sir Mike. As a, as a young scholar, my, uh, you, uh, you as a young scholar, my advice to you is, uh, ikaw bah- ikaw lang mag-dictate kung anong gusto mo. I, I, I mentioned this in my presentation, be bold in the choices that you make. Uh, kung talaga nag-iisip ka na to publish, my, my best piece of advice is kung ano yung mga binabasa mo, doon ka mag-publish. And that's, that's another, uh, I think, one uh, often forgotten uh, point when it comes to writing uh, uh, ma- manuscripts for, for, for journals. It's, it's really, really, it's a really, really good practice to cite uh, journals articles that were published in the journal where you will submit your manuscript. So halimbawa, your target journal is Philippine Studies, 'di ba? And if I am the editor, sa akin pupunta for the first time yung initial submission and I see na, uy, sinight niya itong mga articles ito from Philippine Studies, parang it gives a boost doon sa editor that this particular author actually knows Uh, his or her stuff. Kasi nabasa na niya yung mga dapat basahin related to the particular manuscript. 
So, parang I, I cannot give uh, advice regarding a journal that is manageable kasi ano, it, it, it will go against my, my initial advice na be bold. Mm-hmm. Huwag kang mahihiya. Di ba, if, if time is not that big of a restriction for you, di ba, kung hindi ka naman pinipilit alimbawa na mag-publish na dapat by this year may ma-publish ka na or by two, in, in two years kailangan meron na. If time is not that big of a constraint for you, di ba, go for high impact jobs ka agad. Kung tingin mo, yun yung gusto mong makausap. Di ba, if, if, if you think you, 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 you can contribute there and your yung topic nila yung scope nila is also the same as yours go ahead uh, there, there's no such thing as a manageable journal, journal na para parang ito yung for, for toddlers ito for your for teens ito yung for for adults it doesn't work that way may may journals na parang for this particular topic for this particular uh, geographical area for this particular discipline it's not parang may may beginner's journal at mayroong advanced journal. All journals are advanced journals. That's the nature of a journal. So, yun na nga. As a young scholar, pag pwede ka pa magkamali, kung i-reject nila, problema nila yun. Kung, kung, kung i-reject nila, just, just push and push and push. Uh, if you think you already have a good enough manuscript, just send it kung sa mo gustong uh, ipadala. And some more often than not, editors will give you, even if they reject you, they will give you Uh, advice kung paano mapaganda pa yung manuscript mo. Yeah, thank you uh, Sir Mike. I think also you have to also make sure that you don't have tentative you no know, tentativeness in your manuscript. I mean, you really understood no kasi kahit anong gawin mo but you're not you yourself you're you're not confident with your manuscript. I mean, definitely it will get into the way no. I mean, yeah, you have to also take uh, take note of that go back to the drawing board and see no. I mean, are you really prepared to submit these manuscripts no? I mean, Nagdasal ka na ba? <laughs> Or ano mga preparations na ginawa before that, right? Thank you so much again from that question. I think this is a comment from Dr. Sanapo. It's not really a question, but maybe it, a reaction from you, sir. Sir, you mentioned a while ago that there is no fee in publications. But many of the journals that have high impact factor in social sciences charge a huge publication fee. Because of this, some universities I know actually a lot of research funds just for this. So meron siyang separate allocation for that. Your comment, sir. Well, that's the that's a practice for ano open access journals. Kasi ang nangyayari, because it's open access, they do not charge subscription fees. Wala silang paywall. Uh, wala silang source of income. I mean, k- kailangan rin natin pasweldohan yung mga editors kasi mabigat na trabaho din yung pagiging editor ng journal. So saan sila kukuha ng pambayad sa editor? Pambayad ng layout artist? Pambayad ng proofreader? Nakukuha nila yon doon sa fees coming from uh, coming from the authors. So hindi 100% indicator na kapag naningil yung journal, it's automatically a uh, predatory journal. Pero ang problema ay kung maniningil sila ng, uh, ng 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 fee tapos may may paywall pa rin, tapos merong tapos wal, wal, walang anumang Uh, walang walang anumang uh, editing or uh, ang claim nila is they would publish your work uh, in three months kaagad-agad. That's, I think, ano na yon red flag na yon And, uh, ayun ko, kasi sa, sa kaso ko, and, and I'm speaking only uh, as someone coming from the discipline of history, m- most of the jurors are still uh, W- 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 walang walang fee na hinihingi from from the authors kasi the, the reason because the reason why this works kasi they are university based so the the payment the salaries na binibigay sa mga editors it comes from the editors uh, it, it, it comes from the university so for example halimbawa Ateneo uh, the publisher of Philippine Studies Journal is Ateneo de Manila University Diba? And we have editors working for Philippine Studies. Us editors get our salaries from Ateneo. So because we get our salaries from Ateneo, uh, we, we we don't charge authors that submit to us. So yun, again, plugging. So kung naghahanap ka ng journal na hindi naninigil ng fee, magpasa kayo sa amin. Kasi we, we don't charge you anything. Whether magpasa kayo 
or makapag-publish na kayo, we won't charge you anything. Kasi we already get our salaries from Ateneo. So my guess is, more often than not, these journals that charge fees from contributing authors are those that are open access. And, bec- and they, the reason why they are open access is because they are not university-based. Kaya wala silang pagkukuhanan ng pampasweldo doon sa mga sa mga editors. Pero yun na nga, pag, pag wala yung mga boxes na yun for you to check na bakit siya nag-charge ng fee pero naka-base naman sa sa university or an unknown entity yung, yung publisher, medyo mag- magduda ka na. Uh, kasi posibleng, posibleng predatory journal yun. Right. Thank you again, Sir Mike, for reminding us of the economics behind the open access of journals and also how to deal with those red flags again. No, Thank you. This is again from Dr. Huntado. Dr. Mike, what's the schedule for submission to your journal? I think the Philippine Studies, no? you mentioned quarterly, pero we do, when do we submit po if we are targeting dates? We submit, uh, we accept manuscripts all year round. So there's no parang dapat by this by by this uh, month by this wala we when it, when whenever it's ready just send it to us we accept manuscripts all year round okay so that's clear no uh, eh, ano, all year round so we there's no pressure <laughs> from the end of the the researcher from Dr. Sanapa again sir as a journal editor what do you say to journals that somehow require contributors to cite sources which they have published in their journal Uy, yun na nga, nabanggit ko kanina parang ano siya eh. Uh, it's a plus, parang it's a way of you uh, parang telling the editors that I I have already done the necessary work. Diba? Kasi it's ano rin, it's, it's, a, it's a recognition na the, the reason why you are submitting to this journal, it's because you want to be part of the conversation. Gan, ganun, naman ang, ano eh, ganun naman ang idea behind journal publication. Eh. That there is a conversation going on There are scholars who have already contributed to the conversation and you, as a person submitting a manuscript to a journal, you are essentially saying, I want to be part of the conversation. So how can you be part of the conversation when you don't actually engage? And by engaging, I mean citing uh, relevant literature that na publish in the journal. But at the same time, with the caveat, ito yung important caveat, problem is... Journals also face yung problem of increasing competition amongst themselves. Kung namumroblema tayo as scholars na para bang kailangan, kailangan scopus palagi, kailangan mapataas yung ranking ng university, ganun din sa journals. We, we also have that kind of intense, intense competition na kailangan mapataas yung impact factor ng journal and the most Uh, the indicator most used for that is citation. So I, 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 I cannot deny the reality that it is a practice na, na, na abuso na <laughs> ng ibang journal. So kung baga ano rin siya eh, parang predatory, parang predatory practice din eh. Na, so para tumaas yung citation ng journal, you will require uh, the sub- submitting author na isite mo yung mga... Na, previously published articles sa journal namin. Kasi nakikita yun sa, sa databases na nag-i-increase. Pero ano rin eh, uh, it's a, may, 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 may mga mechanisms na rin sina Scopus and Thomson Reuters to minimize that kind of to, to minimize that kind of bias. Meron na silang mechanisms para pag kunwari tinitignan lang impact factor, they disregard self-citation. So kunwari, a Philippine Studies article citing another Philippine Studies article na minimize na siya. Pero in in some in some indi- in some indices in some databases wala pa siyang ganun eh. So there. Uh, may maganda siyang may maganda siyang idea uh, conceptually. Mm-hmm. Problem is it has been abused by some unscrupulous editors and that's that's the reality. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. I think a uh, follow-up to that is Dr. Sinapo is asking, what percent would be enough, sir? I had an experience of citing five from a certain journal out of 30 to 35 studies I had in the references, but then it wasn't enough. 
Ay, dapat da, dapat nga wala eh. Dapat <laughs> there shouldn't be a there shouldn't be a percentage kasi again it should be the it, it should a journal should respect the autonomy of the author. Kung ayo ni author na i-cite yung journal, yung yung mga article sa sa yung journal, it should be the call of the author, not the editor. That the editor cannot force that. And kapag may ganyan, uh, I think umalis ka na ng journal na yan. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a good practice at all. Na parang kailangan sa at citing five, it's hindi. I mean, editors can encourage you especially kung kunwari talagang relevant naman talaga yung pinapasite niya na article. Pero kung ano na, kung kulang tara na, tagarapala na, uh, uh, siguro it's it's best to get out of that journal kapag kapag ganyan. Sir, peer reviewer daw yung nag-demand, sabi. <laughs> mal- mal- malamang yan yung peer reviewer, yung pinapasite niya, yung mga articles na siya yung nagsulat. At marami rin ganyan, no? Okay? <laughs> marami rin ganyan. It's a reality we cannot deny. Marami rin ganyan. So, if that's the case, kung yung peer review, reviewer yung nagde-demand, again, it, more more than 50% of the cases, if you can argue your if you can argue your case, if you can explain it clearly to the editor, na I, I, can, I cannot simply cite all this stuff, I cannot comply with all the requirements na hinihingi ni reviewer kasi kung maipapaliwanag mo ng mabuti, makikinig naman usually yung editor eh. Na yung editor, oo oh, nga, nakikita ko naman, napaka-excessive naman itong reviewer na ito. I mean, it's a reality. We, we do get uh, edit, uh, reviewers who are too uh, excessive with their comments. So kapag mapapaliwanag mo ng mabuti, editors will more often than not side with the author. All right. Thank you again, Sir Mike, for adding uh, another uh, item in our long list of red flags. <laughs> in, in checking, you know, sometimes in uh, you know, uh, well, I would like to take note of what you mentioned earlier that citing also uh, would contribute to engagement. So I think that's another way of looking at it positively, right, Sir? Okay. Uh, so um, we we still we I mean I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but definitely we don't have the luxury of time at this point. I would like to promote all. Philippine uh, Studies Journal, and of course you will see all of their updates there. No, so f- for all listening now, kindly visit their official Facebook page, Philippine Studies Journal. All right. So before we officially end our session uh, this afternoon, again we would like to thank Sir Mike, and of course for his very insightful discussion of how we can, you know, adding us adding knowledge, no, and ex- uh, sharing his experiences with us about publishing no and um, we would like to present officially this certificate of appreciation to our dear resource speaker let me read the text far eastern university institute of arts and sciences certificate of appreciation is awarded to michael bipande phd for his valuable contribution as a resource speaker during the university research center research capability program with the theme of how to get published in an academic journal from the editor's perspective Given this 15th day of May 2021 at the Far Eastern University, Manila, signed Juanito N. Anat Jr., Department Chair, Department of Interdisciplinary Studies, and Rowena Capulong Reyes, PhD, Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences. Again, Sir Mike, before we proceed to our closing remarks, are there any final pieces of advice or anything you want to add and share with our participants and those who are watching us in the live stream today? Well, uh, first, thank you very much for this opportunity and I hope you were able to learn a lot. And uh, kung meron kayo papasa ng manuscripts, please feel free. And do not, you know, for, do not forget, do not uh, fear making mistakes kasi nagkakamali naman tayong lahat. So don't fear revisions and uh, always look at uh, yung community of scholars rather than your individual uh, achievements. So maraming salamat sa FEU at uh, magandang hapon sa akin. Yes, Doc. Mike, we learned a lot today. Definitely, this is a good encounter engagement and it made us realize the importance of publishing. And of course, I'm sure some of us here are really excited you know, to continue and pursue that uh, direction in our career. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Michael Pante. For the closing remarks, may I call on Ms. Sheila Holyanda 
faculty member of the Interdisciplinary Studies Department. Ma'am Sheila, good afternoon. The virtual floor is yours. Hi, voice. good afternoon. Ayan. So, sir, I am so speechless. It was a very productive afternoon. Ang ganda po ng ating naging usapan today. I, I learned so many things. If there is one word that I uh, I can use no, to describe this event, it would be notable. Grabe talaga yung dami ng inyong mga insights na binigay sa amin. And thank you so much, sir. Talagang applaud, applaud, applaud. So yan. Um, before we close this afternoon webinar, let me take this chance to say thank you again to the following. First, to all our audience for taking time to attend our IDS Beyond Discipline Lecture Series under the University Research Center Research Capability Program. I hope that you enjoyed the seminar as much as I did. Learning the hows and whys are really such big help, especially if you want to know the needed step in publication. How I wish I had this kind of seminar when I was younger. Sana. So yun. Thank you to all the staff, faculty of the IDS department, and our dean, Dr. Rowena Capulong Reyes, who were behind this event. Without your dedication and hard work, this won't be possible. So, applaud that. Thank you to our two great faculty reactors, Dr. Dominic Contado and Dr. Margaret Sanapo, for those well-taught reflections and questions which further deepen the lessons in impact of this seminar. And dami ko natutunan. Thank you to our beloved university, FEU, and all our university administrators for the continuous support and for allowing departments to conduct this, um, this kind of intellectual discussions to further hone not only our knowledge, but also our skills in order to further achieve excellence and professional growth. And lastly, syempre, thank you to our dear guest speaker, Dr. Michael DiPante. Sir, Mike, thank you so much for that notable and informative talk on the importance on how to get our studies published in academic journal. Ang dami ko pong natutunan sa araw na ito, no? And thank you, sir, for the words of encouragement and for reminding us to have courage and keep trying. Try and try until we succeed. It is indeed a challenge not only for those in the field of research, but as well as in the academy to surely score a slot in publication, especially when publishing have become one of the requirements we need to fulfill as part of our professional growth. Not only faculty members, but also other professionals and students should be encouraged to engage into researches, into searching for answers to their curiosity and explanation on certain phenomena in our society and publish the results. Publishing these researches should be done so that this newfound information be shared so many would be able to read and learn from it. Publications serve as bridges that connect people all over the world. It is a powerful tool which allows us to share our experiences with people coming from different ages, races, social classes, field of expertise, and professions. They are indeed um, a tool that helps spread knowledge and awareness. In order to do this, we need the help of other people, such as editors, to further improve our writing skills and make it more substantial and understandable. True professional growth only comes with the acknowledgement of our imperfections, accepting constructive criticisms, and deciding to be better. Let me end this closing remarks by reminding us that knowledge becomes useless unless we put them into practice and that the only way we truly gain power and positive change through knowledge is when we share it instead of hoarding what we know. Let's not be afraid to try. Sabi nga ni sir kanina, di ba? Making mistakes are normal. Okay. Instead of worrying, I let's do our best so our voices through our researches be heard. Stop doubting yourself and start writing. Start editing, start accepting constructive criticism, and let's start publishing. Again, thank you and have a pleasant afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Ma'am Sheila Volianda, for 
giving us those pointers for reflection in your closing remarks. Again, on behalf of the FEU University Research Center, the Institute of Arts and Sciences, from our Dean, Dr. Rowena Capulong Reyes, our IDS Department Chair, Juanito Anit Jr., Sir Christian Evasco of the Marketing and Communication Office, thank you again, sir. And of course, our IDS faculty and staff, we thank you all for joining us in this very enriching webinar. See you again in our next Interdisciplinary Studies Beyond Discipline Lecture Series. For updates, please follow the FEU Interdisciplinary Studies official Facebook page. This is again your MC and moderator, Ron Gascon. Keep safe, everyone. Keep safe, mga ka-IDS. And also, please do not forget to always be brave. Tama raw. Thank you so much. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat.